Higher interest rates are hurting the market. A rental and homeless crisis. There's no denying that Australia is currently drowning in growing housing crisis. A perfect storm of soaring house prices, never-ending demand for houses and a stagnant wage growth has created a desperate need for affordable housing options in many of our cities. The lack of affordable housing has squeezed many potential buyers out of the market, especially in major metro areas. But the tables could soon turn for those living in New South Wales with the potential of a new solution. Councils will be forced to lift long-standing bans on building terraces. Could these policy changes turn the tide on this crisis? As someone with a background in construction industry, I think there is potential. But let's have a look at what the changes are and how they could impact your chance of buying a property. I'll start with a bit of a backstory. For several years now, Australia's largest cities, particularly those in New South Wales, have been in the grip of a significant housing supply crisis. A combination of diverse complex factors have led to the situation, creating a challenging environment for property investors and potential homeowners. One key contributor to the current crisis is the enormous population growth that these areas have experienced. Cities like Sydney have been struggling with increased demand for housing, driven by both organic population growth and higher immigration rates. Basically, the construction of new housing has not kept pace with the growth population, resulting in supply-demand mismatch. An aspect equally important to note is the planning and development process involved in housing creation have become increasingly complex. Property developers find themselves bogged down by red tape with delayed approval times and sometimes restrictive zoning laws preventing the development of new housing. This factor has certainly played a role in contributing to the supply shortfall. Another challenge on the supply front lies in the growing trend of urbanization. With more people moving to urban areas and central business districts, these regions face heightened pressures to accommodate growing population. There are also clear restrictions related to space and infrastructure, making it difficult to increase density fast enough to keep up with the growing demand. Because of these challenges, there has been clear price effect with housing costs spiraling upwards across New South Wales and the rest of Australia. This escalating price, in turn, places home ownership out of reach for many Australians, increasing the urgency of addressing the supply issue. Recognising this, the New South Wales government has been putting together strategies to address the supply issue. As part of the plan, one of the measures is application for rezoning laws and bypassing council to speed up the construction and high density housing near metro stations. The objective is twofold. On the other hand, it presents an attempt to leverage the investment potential of growth areas and key transit points. So how do they plan on doing that? In short, the New South Wales government is overriding local government planning rules, preventing councils from blocking duplexes and other medium density buildings in high value areas, close to buses and trains. The government is hoping to build another 112,000 homes with the rule change in council across Greater Sydney, the Hunter Valley, Central Coast and Illawarra. This represents 30% of the number of homes New South Wales needs to meet under its Housing Accord target of 377,000 new homes by 2029. Currently, each local council has its own rules for what kind of homes can be built in their area. In many local government areas, these rules don't allow the type of homes that we need for the next generation housing close to transport, infrastructure and social amenities. This new rule will mean that residents can't object to having a townhouse or six unit apartment blocks next door because of its height alone. The change will allow dual occupancy and terraces on all R2 zoning land. R2 is a zone of land that is made up of low density housing. It will also allow residential apartment buildings in areas zoned R3 which is made up of medium density residential. The government will enforce the minimum requirements for council by changing the state environmental planning policies, which does not require a law change. So what will the impact of this be for you? Well, for investors, there'll be new rules meaning more investment opportunities. Focusing on building more homes in busy and well-connected areas might increase the value of the income 
they can generate from rent. And with more homes being built in popular areas, investors will find more opportunities to invest in different kind of properties that will appear to a wide range of renters. For regular people wanting to buy a home, these changes are also good news. By allowing the building of more homes of different sizes in areas where it was hard to build before, homes might become more affordable and easier to find. Of course, the success of this new rule hinges on both strategic implementation by government and calculated consideration by developers and property investors. We'll then have to wait and see what the impact of this is in the long run. There has been some criticism from local councillors on the matter, with some council mayors like Hillshire Mayor Peter Gangerman calling it a cookie cutter approach to planning. And North Sydney Mayor Zoe Baker saying rezoning for high density does not mean it would be built. She gave the example of proposed residential high rise next to the Pacific Highway. The land was rezoned in 2019, but North Sydney Council did not receive a development application, DA, until last month. That's four years between rezoning and the DA being submitted. I'm keen to get your thoughts. Do you think the rezoning laws will make a difference? And if you like these videos, make sure you like and subscribe for more content like this.